Good morning. Good morning. Well, happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Y'all ready to study the scriptures together today? I am too. Let's go straight to the scriptures. Matthew 6. I, have, I even have some slides today. How about that? <laughs> And you brought your Bible today. I, we're still going to we're still going to go to it, but um, wonderful. Give us this day our daily bread. Y'all recognize that phrase before? It's this this is the version. It's in Matthew, but the same exact words are found over in Luke. And as y'all know, that's a response. It's the fourth phrase in the prayer that Jesus began to teach his disciples. When they came and asked him, said, teach us, teach us to pray. It's, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. You know, when I was a kid, I learned that, I guess, as a, as a child, it's one of those things you start memorizing. And I grew up in a church, in a church family, in a church home, and memorized uh, the Lord's Prayer at a pretty early age. And but when I thought about that, Lord, give us, uh, give, give us today our daily bread. I, I was really kind of thinking about food. You know, make sure I got enough food to eat today. And there are people who believe that that's kind of really all it's talking about. That is not what Jesus is really talking about. Because there's something so much more than the physical food, it's the spiritual food that Jesus wants us to eat and consume every single day. So the concept of daily bread came back all the way back from the Israelites. They had been delivered from the bondage in Egypt with a mighty hand. And after a month and a half, they started getting hungry. And you know what hungry people start doing? <laughs> I complain. That's what we start doing. I've got, that's one of my H's, it's hungry. I'm hungry. I'm hungry. And so when you get hungry, you get hangry. And you get mad and you get upset and you start grumbling. And that's exactly, people have not changed. That's what they were doing right back, coming back from Israel. They've seen all the miracles that God has done to deliver them. And a month and a little over a month and a half into it, they're complaining and they're grumbling. Oh, if we could just be back in Egypt. Oh, we had plenty of meat to eat. And oh, we had plenty of bread. Moses, why have you brought us out here to kill us with starvation? And the Lord heard the grumbling and he heard the complaints. And he said in, in Exodus, Exodus 16, it's a beautiful chapter. You can go there if you want to, but I'm only going to read one verse out of it. It's Exodus chapter 16, verse 4. He says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a day's portion every day. Why? So that I may test them whether or not they'll walk in my instructions. And there were some other instructions that God gave here. And what he told them is that I am going to bring this bread from heaven that they called manna because they looked at it and said, what is it? And that's what manna means. What, what is it? And, and they, would, they woke up that very next morning and white on the ground, it's like frost. And the Bible says it was like coriander seeds, tiny little seeds that were white tasted like wafers made with honey, something real sweet. And God said, I'm going to bring this, I'm going to pour this out every day except on the Sabbath. And what you need to do every day before the sun comes up, before it gets hot, because when it gets hot, it's going to melt away. God told him, says, I want you to get up and I want you to gather this off the ground. This, you know, some people think God rained down bread like it was a loaf of bread and they went out there and they ate the bread. No, God did not give them the bread. He gave them the ingredient. Okay, And this is important because sometimes we want God just to deliver it to us all ready to pre-eat. They want preachers to give you everything you need to know. 
when really what they're starting to do, God's given them the ingredients so that they could then use that for food. He said, I'm going to do it every day except on the Sabbath. And I want you to go get gather what's called an omer. It's a, it's a Jewish measure of, of, of amount. It's about around half a gallon. He says, I want you to go out and get about a half a gallon for each person in your tent. He said, men, I want you to go do it. He didn't say the women go out and go gather it. Men, you go out there, you men, go out there and gather this manna, get a portion for each person who's in your tent, enough for that day. And I don't want you to leave it overnight because in the children of Israel, we don't have leftovers, <laughs> okay? Because if you left it overnight, it would breed worms and it would stink. I said, but I want you on the day before the Sabbath to gather twice as much. I want you to gather twice as much because you're not going to need to work on Sunday. On the, would be their Sabbath would be Saturday for the Sabbath. Don't, you're not going to work on the Sabbath, so you're not going to have manna on the Sabbath. And sure enough, there were some people who got too much, and they let it stay overnight. And what did it do? Next morning, they, what's that smell? Oh, it's that manna. They left too much. They didn't follow the instructions. And then there were some who woke up on the morning of the Sabbath ready to go gather their daily bread, and it wasn't there because they didn't listen to the instructions. And for 40 years, six days a week, every morning, if you wanted to eat, you went out and you gathered up manna. If you didn't want to eat, lay in your bed. And you might be good for a day or two, but you're going to get out of your bed when you start getting hungry. And that's what they did. They went out and they gathered their food and for 40 years. And over in Deuteronomy 8, um, verses 2 through 3, Moses is reminding the people after these 40 years have passed of what all God has done for them. He says, and you will remember all the way in which the Lord your God has led you in the wilderness these 40 years. Why? In order to humble you, putting you to the test to know what was in your heart, whether, he would keep, whether you would keep his commandments or not. Verse 3, and he humbled you, and he let you go hungry. You know, sometimes God lets you go to hungry. Oh, my stomach just growled. I don't know if y'all picked that up. <laughs> God lets you go hungry sometime because he wants to know what you're really hungry for. He lets us go hungry sometime because he knows, wants to know what's in our heart. But the truth is, he already knows what's in our heart. We need to know what's in our own heart. He already knows. He humbled you and let you go hungry and fed you with the manna which you didn't know, nor did your fathers know, that never heard of it, never seen it, in order to make you understand that man shall not live by bread alone, but man shall live on everything that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord. Y'all recognize that phrase? It's the same phrase Jesus quoted back to the devil when the devil was tempting him to turn stones into bread. It's not about physical food. It's about the word of God. And it comes how often? Daily. Give us this day our daily bread. That's the prayer that Jesus told his disciples to pray. And he wanted us to know that I can, you can trust me. And when you wake up tomorrow, you know what you're going to find on the ground. If, unless it's the Sabbath day, you're going to find manna. And the next day you're going to wake up and you know what you're going to find on the ground? Manna. And you're going to go to bed that next night and wonder, is God still around? Does God still love me? Does he know where I am? And you're going to wake up the next day and you know what you're going to find on the ground? Manna. Every day. God provides for you to be fed in your spirit question is, do we pick it up? See, they'd take it and they'd take it and, and some of them would bake it 
and grind it up, bake it. Some would boil it in different ways. They ate it. But you know, after a while, it says over Numbers, Numbers chapter 11, so they kind of got tired of eating it every day. It's like I remember when I was in probably around third grade that summer, my mama fixed me every single day a bologna sandwich with mayonnaise and a cup of bean soup. And by the end of the summer, there was one thing I would not eat. And that was a bologna sandwich with mayonnaise and bean soup. The thought of mayonnaise made me sick. The thought of bean soup, I could taste it. And I didn't eat it for years. I'd gotten so sick of it. Now I love it. But but there was a period of time. And the truth is when we get so used to sometimes the things that God is providing for us because we are human, we start getting tired of the same old, same old. God's saying, I'm giving it to you for your life. And if they wanted to, to eat, they had to get it. Give us this day our daily bread. Every day. By the time Jesus was born, I believe the whole meaning behind the manna that was given for 40 years had lost its meaning among the religious people. I'd like, I would like you to turn, if you have your Bible, to turn to the sixth chapter of John. Jesus has just, just finished feeding a multitude of people, feeding them with, multiplying with five barley loaves and fish and fed a whole bunch of them. Multitudes, thousands of people were fed by Jesus. And then they came to him and said, hey, will you do a sign for us? Because Moses gave us a sign. Moses gave us a sign of bread that came down from heaven. And Jesus said, Moses didn't give you the bread. <laughs> You're giving the credit to the wrong person. It's the Lord who gave bread from heaven. And then Jesus said here in, in verse 35, I am the bread of life. I'm not a sign. I'm not going to do a sign and, and do some more bread stuff to, to prove who I am. I'm the bread of life. And you who come to me will not hunger, and the one who believes in me will never be thirsty. Amen. If you remember in the Beatitudes, the first preaching that Jesus gave, he says, blessed are those who, what? who hunger and thirst for what? For righteousness, for they shall be filled. Jesus is talking the same thing. He says, you need to be hungry, and you need to be hungry for the things that I'm saying and for the things that I'm telling you. Over in verse 48, he says again, I'm the bread of life. I'm the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they what? They died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that anyone may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down out of heaven. And if anyone eats from this bread, he's going to live forever. And the bread which I'll give him will give for the life of the world also is my flesh. And when the Jesus started talking about it, he completely lost them because they didn't understand what he was talking about. But what he was talking about was the Passover. Do you remember part of the, the Israelites, the very last plague was going to be a death upon the firstborn of all, child, of all of man and beast. God said, I've got, I've got something, Israelites, that I want you to do, and if you'll just do it, you're going to be delivered from this plague. I want you to take a lamb, and I want you to put it out on your doors, and I want you to roast it, and I want you to eat it. They ate and if, and if you do that, the angel of death is going to pass over your house and no one will die. Jesus is our Passover yeah. lamb. Yeah. And those who eat of it, those who consume it. Jesus made that more clear at the Last Supper. He says, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Take, take and eat it. I want you to make it part of you. And take my blood which is the blood of the new covenant and he wants us 
to consume Jesus. Give us every day. Give us today. Father, give us today our daily bread. As Jesus says then over in, in verse 63, and he makes them understand that this is, he's not talking about physical food. He said it's the Spirit who gives life. It's the Spirit who gives life. The flesh provides no benefit. He said the words that I've spoken to you are spirit and they are life. I think it's so interesting, over in 1 Corinthians, Paul talks about the manna and their experience in the wilderness. And he said they ate the same spiritual food. He was talking about the manna. The whole purpose of this is to understand the things that nourish us and nourish not our bodies but our spirit. In this part of the world where we live, few of us really know hunger experience hunger. You may, there may be isolated, but most of us could go without a meal or two. Uh, we are not physically hungry like other parts of the world are, but I'm going to tell you there is a spiritual hunger in this world, and our world is starving to death. American Christians are starving to death on entertainment and fun things when the Spirit is saying, I want you to partake of me every single day. I've heard people in the past who've said, you know, I'm not going to go to this church anymore because that preacher, he's not feeding me. What a cop-out. You know why I say that? Imagine if you are going to try to eat one day a week for 20 to 30 minutes. Is that going to make it for you through the week? Absolutely not. What you need to be doing, what I need to be doing, is enjoying and asking for the daily bread that the Spirit of God wants to provide for me. I'm not coming in here because I'm starving. I'm coming in here because I have been filled with the Spirit each and every day of the week. If we want spiritual power in our church, we're going to have to come back to eating the daily bread every day that we're not relying upon a service now to feed us, even though I hope you get fed. We're going to talk about and we're going to pray about and we're going to meditate on the Scriptures. I pray that you will leave here and feel that you've been fed, but this is not the only time for you to eat. It's not the only time for us to eat. Give us, give us this day, Father, our daily bread, because I need it every day. And sometimes we'll fast and we won't, we'll go without food for a day or two. And I'm going to tell you, it hurts. Yeah. It's painful. Yeah. Doing that. Why does God want us to fast? Because he wants you to remember how hungry you need to be for him. Right. There were demons that his disciples could not cast out. And they said, why can't we do it? He says, this kind does not come out but by prayer and fasting. You've got to be hungry, and you've got to be fellowshipping with the Father every day. Amen. I am not coming to you as a person who has done that every day in my Christian walk. There have been seasons in my life where I have prayed every morning, gotten up early every morning, but there have, I'm going to be honest with you, there are seasons in my Christian life where things and circumstances have happened to me that disappointed me, that discouraged me, and I didn't just, I didn't realize I was angry at God, but I'm going to tell you, I was just kind of miffed. I said, I'm not going to spend that time because it doesn't do any good. And I'm going to tell you, it was the most dry part of my spiritual walk, the most driest part of my spiritual life. And the only way to get out of that is to say, Father, give us today. Give me today my daily bread. I need to spend time with you today. Yes. Morning works great for me, just like the, man, the manna. You know, once the day starts going and the sun gets hot, it just melts away and you get busy with busyness. There's, there's a reason why the Lord's been waking me up early in the morning. 
is to spend time and just to pray and to fellowship with him. This is not intended to put condemnation on you and say, shame on you for not praying every day. Shame on you for not reading every day because I have heaped that upon myself at times in my Christian walk. I'm just not a good Christian. I'm not reading and I'm not praying like I should and I know that I should and I would walk in condemnation. I'm not speaking condemnation. I want you to know what you're missing. Because the days I didn't do it, I missed it. I forfeited what God had for me that day and I didn't walk in it because I didn't fellowship with them and I didn't pick it up and I didn't grind it and I didn't bake it and I didn't boil it and I went the whole day hungry because I didn't spend the time. And Jesus would say, if you want to have power with me, pray this. Give me this day my daily bread. It sounds so simple, but it is not. It really isn't. The truth is I hunger and we hunger for the wrong things. And we fill our life with all kinds of junk to fill up the emptiness in our hearts and our souls. I'm eating Cheetos and Twinkies in the spiritual world and it will never fill you. It will never satisfy you. It won't ever satisfy you. Maybe like Chinese food. It'll fill you for a few minutes, but it's not going to last long. I need some. <clears throat> Something's going to stick to my ribs. And I'm going to tell you what sticks to your ribs. It's the Word of God. And it's the fellowship with God. It's the time we spend with Jesus that's going to stick with you. And it's going to stick with you all day long. And you know what? The next day, you don't worry about what was sticking with you yesterday because that day is over. It's time to pick it up again and let it stick to you again. It's a new day. I've spent way too much time of my spiritual life living off of the victories of yesterday or the day before that. Living on that high of what God did, there are no spiritual leftovers. It's every day, every day. Day. Father, give me, Father, give me my daily bread. And He is faithful, and He's going to give it to you. It's there every morning. His mercies are new every morning. Oh, stomach's growling again. He gives it to us according to our need. You know, remember what we read back? He's going to give you what you need according to what you need today. God, I want the extra. I want more than what I need. God says, I want you to have what you need. You deal with what you need today. And then you come back to me tomorrow. And tomorrow we'll deal with what you need tomorrow. And the next day we'll deal with what you need on that day. I think it's just too much. I, I it's like trying to eat the elephant. You know, you just, I mean, it's so fast, it's so big, you just do it every day. Can you go one day without sinning and just doing bad stuff? So no, there's no way I can do it for the rest of my life. Well, can you do it today? Oh, I can't do it. Well, can you do it for an hour? Can you do it for an hour? When, God, when things start happening and you start getting tempted, you say, I'm not going to do that right now. I'm not going to do it the out for right now at this very moment right now. Live in the moment. Live in the moment of what God gives you and he'll give you everything you need. Give us this day our daily bread. I want us to spend at the end of this service, I'm going to end a little bit early and we're going to spend some more time praying together as a body. I believe our churches are weak because we have spent too little time praying together. We've had music and we've had lessons or sermons, but we haven't spent enough time praying together. And I vow before you we're going to change that. 
we're going to spend time praying together at the end because each and every one of you have needs. And you don't have to just come to an elder, to a prayer partner. You've got members in this body who will pray for you and who will lift you up. And we're going to start getting used to that. I would love to come up here at 10 o'clock in the morning. 10 o'clock in the morning, we see people gathered together, not just visiting, but praying for one another. If we want spiritual power, we're going to have to start eating the daily bread. Believing prayer. Persevering prayer. Unceasing prayer. Don't you want it? Do you want the spiritual power that Jesus, that his disciples recognized in Jesus? Do you want it? Do you want it? How many opportunities I've missed because I didn't have daily bread. Thursday morning when I woke up, there was an image in my head. that I have not seen in a long time. But you've seen the image. As soon as I woke up and opened my eyes, I saw this image and I have not been able to shake it all week long. It was the little black boy in Africa with the head that just seems so largely out of proportion to his tiny malnourished body. His eyes were gaunt, and his face was thin, and his lips were pursed, and his shoulders were thin, and his arms were little sticks, and his legs were sticks with little round knees in the middle. You've seen the image because because people use it on TV trying to pull your heartstrings, but this was not something that I had seen any time recently. God showed me this picture. In the swollen belly of this little bitty child, God said to me, this is my church. They are starving to death spiritually. And it is time for us as a church to be part of encouraging them to eat every day. And I can remember those videos that I've seen of these children grabbing food out of the bowl and gobbling and trying to put it in their mouth as if one gorging of food was going to fix all of their problems. That has been a lifetime of malnourishment for that child. Our church for a generation has been malnourished in the spirit. And we're going to have to take responsibility as believers and as disciples of Jesus Christ to come to him every day so that he fills you with the power of God to use you to feed people and that our church is no longer spiritually in a famine. I don't know how many of you have ever felt like that little child, but I'm going to tell you, There's churches who are filling their mouths and their bellies full of things that are unholy and things that are not spiritual. And my hope and my prayer is that God will, my confidence is this, God will answer your prayer when you say and you ask, Father, give me my daily bread because I need it. There's a world of people who need it. And God gives you the keys of the kingdom to give it to them. And if the church is not going to do it, who is? Our spiritual life depends on it. And until we are clothed with power from on high, we will not have the spiritual power to meet a world or even a community or even a body of believers who is starving to death spiritually. The time that we spend with God is not a check on the box. Well, I didn't spend my time today Today's my day to check my... It is not a check on a box. It is a time of fellowship with your Father. 
It is a time of sweetness to experience with him. Manna, they said, was sweet, tasted like honey. And if we can start spending that time with the Father, enjoy that fellowship and that peace and the joy that comes by us asking, because he's listening and he's answering. The question is, are we hearing? Because we don't live by bread alone. We live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And we won't have power if we don't have ears to hear. I'm going to ask you to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to ask you if you have need in your life, spiritual need. I'm going to ask you to stand because I'm going to ask members to gather around you and pray for you. Y'all hear what I said? If any of you have spiritual needs that you want people to pray for you, I'm asking you to have the courage to stand up right now. Nobody? We have one who has spiritual need in our church. I don't believe that. I don't believe it. Three, four, five, six, seven. I don't believe that. Some of you can't stand. If you can't stand, then raise your hand. Do you have spiritual need in your life? I'm going to ask you, of those of you who don't have need, to gather around the people who do right now. I want you all to gather together. I want you to pray for each other, and we're going to spend some time where I want you to pray for them. I want you to pray for them right now. Dallas, I'm going to let you play some music, but if you're not already gathered around somebody, not, just don't sit where you are. I want you to touch somebody, and I want for the next five to ten minutes for us to pray as a body out loud, pray for the people who need prayers. Will y'all do that right now? Wherever you are, begin praying for each other and lifting each other up in prayer because there are people here who are in need. There are people here who are in need. Even if they didn't stand up, we need what the Holy Spirit is going to provide us in daily bread.